I used to believe that building healthy habits and having a consistent workout routine required massive time commitment, like endless hours at the gym and dedicating entire days to really complex workout routines. But what if I told you that the real changes lie in the small habits, the ones that can take less than five minutes. Today, I'm excited to share with you 12 micro habits that have not just saved me time, but completely transformed my approach to health and fitness, allowing me to go from never working out to having a consistent workout routine that I truly enjoy. So let's talk about it. One way to increase the physical activity that you can do in a day without having to commit a lot of extra time to it is to combine it. This could be like meeting friends and picking up a coffee and going for a walk or meeting friends and suggesting to try out a new workout class, like a Pilates class, a yoga class, a cycling class, something fun. It could also be if you need to pick up something or you need to go to a grocery store, go for a run, run to the grocery store, grab the stuff, walk back. That's one of my favorite things that I did during exam season seasons where I would barely have any time to breathe, but I needed to get groceries and I needed to get some physical exercise in. So that's what I would do. It can be cycling into work because let's be honest, sometimes taking public transport, driving and cycling takes literally the same amount of time, but cycling has a lot of health benefits and allows you to be outside for like half an hour and get your physical exercise in, in the same time that it would take you anyway to get to work or to university. Exercise doesn't have to be intense one, two, three hour workouts. It can just be doing something you would do anyway, but trying to incorporate some movement, some exercise into that activity. Remove friction. If you want to not only save some time, but also save some energy. You need to make it as easy as possible for you to get to the gym or to get to your workout class or to get outside and run. When you are really busy, when there are 10,000 things on your mind and on your to-do list, you do not have time and energy to sit there and convince yourself that you need to get up and go to the gym. So do anything you can do that makes it easier for you to actually get to the gym. This can be laying out your clothes, preparing everything the night before, deciding on what workout you're gonna do, setting an alarm or two or three, putting going to the gym or going for a run in your calendar as an actual event. What I like to do is to get up and to immediately put on my gym clothes, my gym clothes that I have laid out the night before. When I have my gym clothes on, it already feels so much easier to just go to the gym really quick or go for a walk really quick, go for a quick run. I mean, why wouldn't I? I'm already dressed for the occasion, so I might as well. What I would also do a lot of times when I had really early classes and I didn't have time to go to the gym before class is I would pack my university bag, I would pack my gym bag and I would go to university with my gym bag. Once I was there, what was the point of having carried that gym bag with me to university if I wasn't gonna go to the gym after university? I mean, it would have been a complete waste of energy, right? To carry it with me, just to not go to the gym. So at that point, when I'm at university, with my gym bag and classes are over and ready to go home, I might as well just go to the gym before heading home. Morning movement. This doesn't mean you need to wake up at 5 a.m. to do a two hour workout, but what we do in the morning really sets the tone for the rest of the day. And it's really important to make time for our priorities in the morning. So if working out is a priority for you, take some time in the morning, wake up 10 minutes earlier just to walk outside for a little bit. That really sets the tone for the rest of the day. You have already done a little bit of physical exercise and it just makes it way easier to do another 10 minutes of walking in your lunch break. And it makes it easier to go to the gym after work. And if you like working out in the morning and you're able to go to the gym for an hour, then that is amazing. But if you can do it for 10 minutes or for five minutes, that's already worth so much and it really helps you prioritize movement throughout the rest of the day. Intensity. Time is not equal to intensity. An intense workout doesn't mean doing a longer workout. So if you only have 30 minutes and you want to do a really intense workout, you can do that. You can do that in multiple ways. Incorporating compound exercises. Compound exercises are exercises that use multiple big muscle groups at the same time. Things like squats and deadlifts use up a lot of the muscles. Bench pressing and military press use the core as well as a lot of muscles in the upper body. Split squats and hip thrusts use the core as well as almost all of your muscles in the lower body. And all of that 
in one exercise. High intensity interval training, I think it's very clear, it's in the name. If you wanna have an intense running session but you don't have the time to run 10 kilometers, do some sprints. If you wanna take it even further, do uphill sprints. And you can do these on the treadmill or outside. Honestly, 10 minutes of sprinting up a hill is more than enough, you're gonna be done. Body weight exercises or very calisthenics related exercises, like different variations of pull-ups, push-ups, handstands, planks. Those can be really intense. Not adding weight doesn't mean that it is not intense. And the best part about these exercises is that you can do body weight exercises at home. A lot of times the only thing you need is a mat or you can even just use a carpet or some grass if you have a backyard. Getting ready at the gym. This is a very personal one because it's something I've avoided for years and years and years. But once I started getting quite busy and also quite picky about doing my workout in the morning, I realized there was no way around that. I had to go to the gym with all the things for the day get ready at the gym and then from the gym go to wherever I had to go to. I would waste so much time by going to the gym, coming back home and then again leaving home. And on some days when traffic is bad, getting ready at the gym saves me an hour, which is a lot. And it's really not that bad. I would always take flip-flops, take two towels or so like one workout towel and a completely separate towel for your shower. Maybe take a shower cap if you don't wanna get your hair wet because a lot of times the, the showers just get water everywhere. Some shower gel, a brush or makeup bag, all of that and you're good. Also, some gyms have very solid showers. If your gym has a sauna, usually they have a shower next to the sauna which is most likely way nicer and always empty. So use that one instead of going to the normal showers. If you are enjoying this video, make sure to subscribe for more videos like this. Moving during breaks. This one is really simple. Whenever you're taking a break, you're going to get some coffee, do a little stretch. If you are still sitting, do a little, a little this. <laughs> one of these, you know, just stretching back and forth, lifting your arms, lifting your legs a little bit. I think a lot of us sit down the majority of the day, which is not ideal, but sometimes that's really the only way to get work done. So I think we should really make the best of it and try to get a little bit of movement, a little bit of stretching in, in those little breaks. Think of the benefits of exercise way beyond the way it makes you look or the calories that you burn. I think generally it's not a good idea as to track calories, to be overly attached to what your watch says, how much you move that day. Exercise is an amazing way to relieve stress, to improve concentration. And especially if you're a really busy person, you can benefit from a little bit of a clearer head, a little bit of stress relief, some increased resilience. And this is also a good way to remind yourself of why you're going to the gym. So you could even make a list or write some post-it notes with how going to the gym helps you in your day-to-day -day life, in your busy life. Things like, I feel less stressed after I go to the gym. I can concentrate better after I go to the gym. Put them on the mirror, you see them every single day, and that's just gonna give you a push to go to the gym because you get reminded that it's not wasted time. It's not time that you need to take out of your already busy schedule that gives you nothing. It's time that you invest in yourself and that actually gives you so much back. Work out from a place of love. I know this is probably way easier said than done. I really wanted to include this here because when I felt insecure, I would work out from a place of hatred almost, like of dislike. And now I really work out because I love myself, I love my body. And because I know I'm doing myself and my health a favor, because I know I sit a lot. I'm not doing my health a favor by sitting every day. So I should really invest in my health the way that I can, by working out, by taking an hour out of my day to work out or taking 10 minutes to just go on a walk. Like I said, this is a mindset change that maybe takes a while to build, but it's a good thing to keep in mind. And it's a little bit of extra motivation if you see working out as a form of self-care and as a way to show yourself some self-care, to do something nice for yourself. I was taken by surprise by how dark it is getting. It is only 3 p.m. and all the lights need to be on so that you can even see me because otherwise I'm just this like talking head. Um, so yeah, sorry for the lighting, not great, but we work with what we have. Food. 
a lot of people overcomplicate what healthy eating or balanced eating is. If you're busy, you do not have time for that. Coming from someone who has studied nutritional science for the last three years and who is getting their bachelor's degree on it, healthy eating doesn't need to be this really complex, time-consuming thing. You don't have to buy 10,000 types of supplements and all of these foods or food supplements that promise you different things. What I think is best to focus on, especially if you don't have a lot of time but you want to live a healthier life, is really the, the basic stuff, which this basic stuff is actually so important and which really builds the base for your health. So eating vegetables, eating enough fiber, taking care of your gut microbiome, drinking water, eating unsaturated fats, not cutting out entire groups of food. Like, I think the internet and various opinions that you stumble across on the internet have really, really overcomplicated what healthy and balanced eating actually is. If you want to make healthy eating as simple as possible and as attainable as possible, just go back to the basics. If you don't have time to meal prep or you don't want to meal prep, but you still want to prepare something for the week, an amazing thing you can do is to prep ingredients. So instead of preparing the full meals, maybe prepare some chicken and some veggies separately, and then you can mix them together. Then you can decide if you're gonna cook some rice and have chicken, rice, and veggies, or if you're gonna make a burrito and you're gonna add some sauce to that, some lettuce, some tomatoes. There are so many options. But if you prep some ingredients, it will make it easier for you and way quicker for you to have a full meal in front of you without having to prepare the entire meal on the weekend. Multivitamins. The thing with multivitamins is that, like the name suggests, they contain lots of different vitamins and the dosages are way off. So you have this daily recommended intake. This is calculated based on studies, on multiple studies, on scientific research. And this is usually XYZ amount of grams or of milligrams per person per day. And on the nutritional label, you will be able to see what percentage that corresponds to. And one look at the label will tell you that the percentages are 100%, 83%, 400%, 333%, which means that if you take one capsule, you get three times the daily dosage of sometimes multiple vitamins at the same time, which is first of all, not necessary. When it comes to vitamins, more is not always better. Second of all, there are some vitamins that actually accumulate in the body. They are called fat soluble vitamins and they are Adeka, so A, D, E, and K. And if I look at this multivitamin, it has 400% of vitamin D3. If you take one capsule every day, then every day you take four times the recommended dosage just from the supplement. It doesn't take into account any food you eat. Food includes micronutrients. And a lot of times if our nutrition is balanced, we get all of the micronutrients we need from that. Also, we get vitamin D from sun and very little sun exposure will give us all the amounts of vitamin D that we need. I'm not saying this to like scare anyone or to say that all supplements or, or, or micronutrients are a scam because they are not. I just think this form of putting 20 micronutrients in one capsule is not efficient. I feel like that was a little bit of a negative note. So daily gratitude. Being grateful just in general is a good idea, but especially when we're trying to work out, we're trying to build a healthy lifestyle, I feel like it can be really easy to slip into this trap of always wanting to do better, not being satisfied, wanting to do more, not being okay with how much we worked out or what our progress looks like or how much time we're able to invest into working out and all of that. Just a lot of comparison, a lot of dissatisfaction can come up. But the thing is, our bodies are so amazing if you think about it. We are capable of running fast, of lifting heavy stuff, of jumping on things. Like how amazing is that? I think we're always surprised that they can always do way more than we thought they could. Training, working out really reminds you that you can do whatever you set your mind to. Your body is usually able to do that. Usually your mind is the one that gives up first. So while grateful in general is good, specifically in the context of this video, be grateful for your body. It's the youngest it will ever be right now. You are able to do so many things. Appreciate it for everything it 
does for you and for everything it will continue to do for you. We are really lucky if we get to have a healthy body, a body that is capable of working out and it's not something that we should take for granted. Remember, you can do anything you set your mind to. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe, like the video, you know what to do. And I will see you in my next video. Bye bye.